So we are getting ready to do probably the scariest part of this, and that is to cut a hole in the van. I'm gonna be installing the Max Air Deluxe fan, but I feel very prepared. I think I have studied and you know watched a zillion videos. I think I know what I'm doing. It's just the act of actually doing it that is scary because I don't know. I've never used a jigsaw before, so I'm gonna take it really slow. But before I do that, I am going to be prepping by creating some supports. Not only a frame to go around the fan itself, but also to give that panel of ceiling a little bit more support. Looks like that's exactly 25 inches. I need to start my cut a little bit further in so that there's room for it to angle out. I know it's 25 inches long, which means I need to make my next mark at 27 inches. I measured the angle that I need with this thing. It is like it bends so you can just kind of, I just stuck it up to the top, moved this out until it matched with the, with the rib. And now I know what angle I need. So remembering that the part that I put the line on is the top, I need to make sure that the angle comes out. So it's, so the blade doesn't move. It's the plate that moves. I don't know the exact angle. Unfortunately, I don't think this thing actually tells me the actual angle. If, I, if you have something that'll tell you the exact angle, that would probably work better than what I'm doing right now. I just don't have that. So I am going to kind of eyeball it. So now it is cut on the line. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. The blade will be the correct direction, which is good. Moment of truth. It's too small. I need it a little bit less angled. Try number two. Did a little bit of trial and error and adjusting with the blade. So I think we are in a good place now. And then we're gonna go 25 and a half. Yay! Wow, that's like exact. All right, 25 and a half. I'm gonna make another one of these. And then I'm just, just gonna cut a couple of 14 inch crossbars with no, no angle or anything. So it's just gonna go directly into this. You can buy these pre-made. I think they're like 3D printed or something and they match the exact contours of the top of the van. I really thought about buying one, but I don't think it's necessary. So this is, I think all the prep work that I need to do. I thought this was gonna take longer. <laughs> I think it's time to cut a hole in my roof but I'm not gonna do it here because I have the dogs with me. I'm gonna make sure that they are somewhere safe while I cut a hole in my roof. All right, let's do this. I am now going to determine exactly where my fan is going. And then I'm, I'm actually just gonna do two pilot holes at the front because I have this frame and it has to go like exactly centered. I don't wanna determine where the corners are yet until I'm on the roof. All I wanna know from the top is the furthest out, like the furthest forward that I can go. So I'm gonna get like a general idea of where this is going. Then I'm gonna make my marks. Then I'm gonna cut two holes near the front and that will be it. Because when I get up top, I'll be able to set this thing on exactly where it's supposed to go. And that'll be where I draw my final one. Here goes the first one. I'm so scared. I can see daylight. So now I'm gonna tape up a lot of plastic so that everything just falls into the plastic and no problems. I'm also gonna lay out a ton of plastic on the floor so that if any pieces do fall through or if my little bag here fails, it will at least fall onto more plastic. All right, so here we are on top of the roof, ready to do this. Are we ready though? I don't know, but I've got all my stuff up here. And of course I have my little adapter thingy. Um, this thing is really cool, but it is gonna make it to where I absolutely have to get my cuts perfect. Um, Cause I can't just scoot the fan over at ever so slightly. This is meant to be in exactly a specific place because as you can see, it kind of like gets thicker at the edges. 
um, and that's to go down to where the roof like dips. So I don't really have much wiggle room here. So the first thing I'm doing is laying this down so that I know exactly where it needs to be. I have found my holes. I'm gonna trace on the inside of this. Oh my God, my hand is shaking and I'm not even cutting. Voila, so now I'm gonna measure. Yeah, that is not 14. So I'm gonna have to cut, I think just outside of the line. So I'm gonna get the next little pilot holes cut. Whoa. Okay, this is easy, this is good. I'm gonna move up a size. Hopefully this isn't jumping up too high. Think I can go straight to monster? Or should I do mini monster? Let's do mini monster. And now, monster. That was easy. So all my holes are cut. This should mean I'm ready for the jigsaw. Fun fact, my metal blade does not fit in these holes. So let's see if I can make these holes a little bigger. should work. Fits there. Fits there. Now we take. Putting it on the slowest speed. Here we go. That is not pretty. I'm gonna tape it back down in the hopes that it won't just suddenly fall later and maybe it'll help with vibration as I keep going. up because I don't want that to fall through. Look, it's part of my roof. Now I can at least remove this tape. Definitely got to clean up the corners. So let me see how badly I've done. Oh, okay. So here's perfect. I did slip a little bit here. And then here. Oh my God. I think it might be perfect. Okay. I'm going to clean up the corners. Alright, I have done it. I have a hole in my roof. I think it fits pretty well. And I've already finished filing uh, the edges down. I did it. And I have a skylight. <laughs> I'm pretty proud. I got a hole in my van. I can't seem to find my paintbrush. I am going to rustoleum the inside here. I have a spray can, but I'm not going to try to spray it. I'm going to spray a good amount onto a plate. And then I guess I'm going to use this as a paintbrush. <laughs> and uh, hopefully that works. Now I am going to install the little adapter thing here. Um, and I'm just going to follow the manufacturer's instructions, which starts with taping around the perimeter and then kind of scuffing ever so slightly the paint just to like dull it a little bit. They recommended using isopropyl alcohol to clean this. So then I have to let this completely dry. So this is nice and dry. So it's time to put the window weld on. I've never used this before. It does say to use two gloves, like double glove. This has like a little soda can thing on the end. Okay, weird. You do pop this little thing off. So I'm gonna break the seal here. Oh, it's black. Oh, I didn't expect that. Now it does say to make sure that you are using this in a well-ventilated area. I'm gonna go ahead and say that outside is pretty well-ventilated. I'm gonna go ahead and glove this hand too. There's like acids in this and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I have to do three one-eighths inch beads. Now, I'm gonna flip it over, lay it down, and push it. Now it said that some of this was gonna come out the sides, and I don't actually see that happening. Okay, so I have to press down until it starts to ooze out the sides. 
So that just means I wasn't pressing hard enough. There we go. Now it's oozing. It says to, with the stuff that oozed out, create a fillet with a double gloved finger. But I don't think enough oozed out. So I'm gonna do an extra step that I don't know if I should be doing. I'm gonna but just put like a tiny bit just to give me enough. I honestly don't know if I needed to do that, but I did it. Cause I don't know if this is part of what's gonna create like the seal. So in 15 minutes, I can take the tape off. Ooh, it's so pretty. That is a nice clean line. Ah, uh, yeah. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to go ahead and go underneath and we'll see if we can start putting in the framing. So in order to do this, I'm going to need to kind of clamp this just to hold it in place. And then I'll drill my pilot holes. I don't want to clamp it too crazy tight. This is just to hold it where I want it because the adapter thing said don't clamp it. The next thing I need to do is I put an extension thing on here so that hopefully I can actually drill my pilot hole. So let's see what happens. I forgot how long that takes. So you'll be happy to know this works. Cool. So it is day two of the fan install. I left off yesterday working on the framing on the inside. I realized at the last second that the screws that I had are just a little bit too short. So discovered I needed to go to Home Depot to get more, which I did today. Had I done that last night, I might have skipped the unfortunate event that happened and somebody broke into my van. I had purchased some like $35 plastic conduit. Somehow that is all they stole. I still had all of my tools and stuff in here and they picked the one like cheap plastic item. However, it is going to be $450 for me to fix the glass, which is less than my deductible. So yay for insurance. <laughs> Anyways, less about that and more about my fan install. I have the right screws now, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up the framing pieces, and then we're going to head up top to actually install the fan. I did decide to come to a nice beautiful area. I'm up near Mount Baldy. There were these like nice turnouts in the foothills, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I thought, what a perfect place to finish my fan install, especially after a night like last night. So now that I got this one in there real good, I'm gonna go ahead and install the two side pieces first. That way I can be sure that I have these two exactly the right length apart. And then I will double check with the adapter thingy to go up in there to make sure that it fits before we head to the roof to start putting in the fan. Oh, drilling those pilot holes. I don't know why it is so hard and it's above my head and the drill's heavy. It feels like a workout, but this is the last screw. Sort of as a last minute decision, I put the two shorter pieces like much wider than the actual hole. Mostly because in the instructions for the adapter, it does say that if the screws are going to go down um, into any roof cross beams to cut a clearance hole. And it says specifically like the screw should only engage the adapter and the sheet metal. So I might be out of luck on these pieces, though there is that little bit of a gap. So that may actually be enough. But I figured by moving these over, then they're out of the way. For now, that's where I put them. I'm gonna start gathering some materials and then we're uh, we're going to the roof. I am on my roof right now and this is just amazing. It's a little bit windy, but that's okay. It is very sunny, that's less okay. It's gonna be lots of cars passing, but I don't care. This is gorgeous. Hi. Hi. <laughs> First thing I'm gonna do is just double check and make sure this thing fits. If it does, then I'm gonna go ahead and put butyl tape around the edges, 
lay it down. The brackets here need to be on the side. So if this is the front of the van, this is the back of the van, or the other way around. As long as the metal things are on the sides, then I'm good. Make sure this fits. And it does, that is good. I have a little tiny bit of wiggle room. Not sure if I'm supposed to have this much wiggle room. Okay, so now I'm gonna butyl tape around the edges. With the adapter that I got, they gave me some butyl tape, but I also purchased some. So I'm gonna use this one first and see if it doesn't like stick to the paper too much. Last time I used butyl tape, I used like the really cheap stuff. It was a big, big, big pain in the butt to actually put on. So what I wanna make sure is that I'm actually covering the screw holes. So I want this to be on the edges. And then when I get to the corners, I'm gonna remove the tape so that I can kind of bend the butyl tape around. So when I come back around here, I wanna make sure I have a half inch of overlap. They have given me pretty much exactly enough. So I have a little bit more overlap. It recommends half an inch. I have like two and a half inches. I wanna make sure that I'm putting it on the correct direction. So these thingies, the little metal brackets, on the sides. So now I'm gonna drill my pilot holes and not fall backwards. <laughs> not fall backwards to the other side of the van. So it's time to start screwing them in. From the little package that they give you with the Max Fan, there's a bag of screws and there's three different types of screws. There's this one that has a white head. I'm gonna save those for later. Those are gonna be the visible screws underneath when I put on the trim. And then there are some longer screws and shorter screws. I'm not gonna use the shorter screws. I don't need them right now. With the adapter kit, they also gave me some longer screws. I think these might be for the corners because it did say something about possibly needing longer screws. So I'm gonna hang on to these just in case uh, I don't get a bite from the other screws. So this is the part where it actually matters what order I go in to an extent. I just wanna keep the pressure somewhat even on all sides at all times. So I'm going to kind of start with the corners, like opposite corners, opposite corners, and then go with like the next one and kind of do a pattern. Actually, I'm not gonna start with the corners because I don't know if I'm gonna Need to use the longer ones later. And then I'm not gonna tighten them all the way down just yet until I have them all in. All right, so I'm gonna go around and tighten, but not too much, because I don't wanna accidentally break the little flange here. Like I don't have the um, drill on the highest setting. Okay, that is definitely in there. My apologies for the audio, because it's windy here, and I guarantee it is terrible. Also the cars, so I'm sorry. I am going to go ahead and get the lap sealant on. Not gonna do anything fancy here other than coat the entire outside, as well as each screw head. I'm gonna tape the surrounding area so that I can lap seal like literally everything, and hopefully it'll come up looking nice and clean. All right, well. I'm not gonna win prettiest rooftop anytime soon, but it ain't bad. All right, it is time to actually install the fan. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that these wires are hanging down. The other thing I'm gonna do, as shown in the instructions, is I'm gonna turn this knob down here to open up the hood all the way. All right, looks like that's all the way. Now. Are the holes lined up? Okay, I'm now trying to figure out why the holes are not lined up. Am I supposed to like push down more? Why do you hate me? It's just not going down enough. Like the screw holes aren't lining up. Why want to go down more? Uh, this is supposed to be like the easiest part. I'm not gonna lie. I'm stuck. I've tried everything to get those holes to align. Apparently this is a thing with installing these, but out of all the videos that I've watched, I've never seen anybody have this problem. So of course, it'll be me. 
Literally, there are two screws between me and finishing this project. Apparently, customer support, and I didn't talk to them myself, but just from other people, apparently customer support just tells people push harder, which makes sense. There's a gasket underneath, and I guess the gasket is like a little bit tight. You have to kind of push down against it. Problem is, is that I don't want to push so hard that I'm breaking it. So I don't know how hard I can push. It just doesn't want to go down, and I don't know what to do. Whenever I get stuck like this, I find that taking a break really helps. I'm in a beautiful place. I may just hang out here for a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of relax, think for a while, do a little bit more internet research, see what I can find. And uh, hopefully we can get these last two screws in. It looks good though. Okay. I'm going to try to do the screws at an angle one more time because I've heard that that works for people um, that install these a lot where they just kind of, even though they can't see the bottom hole, they just screw down until it catches. Um, I'm going to try that and if that doesn't work, I also saw um, that I can maybe take a screwdriver and raise up the little metal pieces that are on the actual flange itself. I'm gonna try the screws first one more time, and if that doesn't work, I'm gonna try to raise up the back ones. Here we go. All I'm doing is messing up the outside, so I'm not gonna do that. Supposedly this will lift up. Oh, it does. Quite well, actually. Oh, Just look at that. It just raised right up. Okay, okay. Come on, little fan, you can do it. Okay, I can't see on that one because I messed up the hole. <gasps> I can see the hole though. Yeah! Woo! One more screw. This is the last screw. Yay! The glorious moment. Ah! Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what an adventure. Okay. It is time to celebrate. I am so proud of myself that I got this stupid fan in. I am so excited. I did it! If only I had known ahead of time that you can just move those little metal pieces so that the holes align. That would have saved me a ton of trouble and a ton of time. So if you're doing this and your holes don't line up, just take it back off again. Take a little screwdriver, the little metal things, the little brackets, they just easily pop up. Super easy. Well, I can't turn the fan on yet because I don't have electricity, but I can cheers it. I did it. We're gonna clean up a little bit and we're gonna call it a day. Cheers.